How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio and today I'm going to show you how to read your scopes in DaVinci Resolve. This is something you need to know how to do. You know, without it you might be uh, color correcting and color grading your footage pretty blindly. So let's get right into it. Alright so we have a shop. I haven't done anything to it. It's raw. And then if you come here to your bottom right you have your scopes and there's a keyframe option but it should be on the scopes. So the scopes are going to help you kind of analyze your footage while you're color correcting and color grading. And you definitely need to know how to read um, scopes if you have a monitor that doesn't correctly display uh, the perfect hues and luminance ranges in your shot. If you come down here, you have a drop down of all your uh, different scopes. We're going to start today with the waveform. Here's the waveform. Click here. You can click here to expand it. Obviously on the waveform or uh, pretty much any of these uh, scopes, it's going to show uh, what frame you're at uh, in your shot. That's that's what it's showing for. All right. That is uh, a little obvious, but let's move on. So the vertical axis here represents the entire potential luminance range of an image. All right. And then kind of this, the horizontal axis at the bottom shows the blackest black here at the bottom. And at the top, this represents the whitest white. All right, so everything else in between represents the mid-tone range of an image in a grayscale format. So lighter areas toward the top, darker areas toward the bottom. All right, so now let's turn on colorize and uh, you can see here each of the uh, RGB values in the shot. More red dominance than anything. As you can see, red leans towards the top. And when you see white here, it's just showing that each channel has uh, equal intensity. All right. So let's go to our offset and I'm going to pull up toward red and as you can see the red channel is just completely pulling away from everything else and then same thing will happen with blue and green so I typically leave this not colorized and then when you're going to do your color correction you go to adjust your gain and as you can see here at the top if you go past 1023 you start to lose information in your shot Typically you don't want to do that. And then same thing with the blackest point, the shadows, we start to lose information if you go down to zero. Some instances you can, uh, you can blow it out, but typically you want to stay in it. Now let's go ahead and go to your parade. Now we can see um, the red, green, and blue channel here. This is obviously very helpful to see if there's uh, any you know color dominance in the shot. Uh, if we look here, it's going to be red, and then blue is kind of taking a back seat in the shot. You know, so the parade kind of shows us uh, the red, green, and blue kind of all separated, while the waveform shows uh, all together laid on top of each other. Um, you can use this to white balance footage, um, trying to get all of them kind of on the same level. If a particular shot has just naturally more of a red, a prominent reds then it's going to look a little weird if you try to balance each one uh, as you can see here the zero down here still represents the um, the blackest point and 1023 up here still represents the whitest point so if you go up bring this up too much it's going to clip same thing with the uh the blackest point down here it will clip your information you'll lose information you don't want to do this maybe sometimes if if there's a certain case a rare case for a shot, for a look, for a person, but typically you don't want to clip. We can go over here, we can go to YRGB, but you have your YRGB option, so you have your luminance, um, but I typically stay on just RGB. Again, the parade is very good for showing us the distribution of color and brightness in, uh, in each channel. All right, so let's go to our vector scope. Now the vector scope you're gonna be using a lot, so our vector scope distributes the visual data of an image on a circular graph representing the hues and their saturation levels. So, so a well-balanced image will kind of look like a cloud of pixels in the center here uh, with some deviations toward uh, more prominent colors in the shot. So obviously red is our more prominent color here. So it's a little bit more toward red unless we were to just bring it down a little bit, kind of balance the shot and now uh, it's looking a bit more balanced. Now, if you if you come to a shot and it looks like this, uh, we know why it's leaning more towards the green, and the shot definitely looks a bit green. So this is good for your white balance. And then let's zoom in on the image here. 
and we can go over here to our menu and our vector scope and we can go here we can do show skin tone indicator and you want to put this on it's very important guys I promise but not as important as you think but it is uh so this is our skin tone indicator and this is kind of where you want your skin tones to sit around so how would you go about this the best way to go about this is to go to your power windows and put a power window around your subject's skin and turn your highlight on and then go to your qualifier and select the skin and now we're seeing the skin perfectly it's already like perfectly on the line um, and then you can go to your menu again and do show two times zoom this is what you want to show and now we're seeing in the it's literally like perfect it was a bug and then you're seeing it perfectly on the line now right and then if we go to our offset and we move it towards the uh, the red of the magenta it's you know it sways off it towards the green but it doesn't always have to be perfectly on the line because some people's skin sits more towards the cooler tone uh, while some sit more towards the warmer tone especially if you're going for a, a dramatic look it does not it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be right on the uh, skin tone indicator talk to whoever you're uh, working with if anything uh, it needs to lean more towards the magenta that always looks better so the more compact it is here in the middle the less saturated let me show you what I mean I'm gonna turn up my saturation and you see what I mean now I believe I went over most of the stuff on the vector scope so let's go to the histogram now this is your most important scope I'm just kidding it's not uh, you won't be in here too much but what it is it's showing the percentage of each channel uh, RGB uh, across the entire image so blackest point is going to be here on the left whitest point is going to be here on the right and then you come to your menu um, you can put on your white channel as well yeah you know it's the histogram let's move on and then this your CIE chromaticity is great for grading with high dynamic range um, this here is showing us our rec 709 gamut and then this outline here is pretty much showing us all visible light and you see where we stand in the Rec. 709 gamut. And then you can go to your menu and compare it with other gamuts. Um, you know, RE Wide Gamut 4. You know, Da Vinci Wide Gamut. Uh, Rec. 2020. So it has its place. Um, okay. And then some cool little menu options here. Uh, up here, if you want to see two at once. If you want to see four at once. And then you can extend it. This is for Madman. Everything in the scopes has its place, ultimately. So, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking through the whole video. I hope you learned something. Subscribe for weekly DaVinci Resolve videos. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.